In this video for section 4.3, we're going to talk about the properties of logarithms. And the first one that we're going to see is the product rule. The product rule states that if we have log base b of m times n, that equals log base b of m plus log base b of n. So we can break up the product into the sum of two separate logarithms. So we're going to look at example one. It says to use the product rule to expand each logarithmic expression. When you see the word expand in a problem, what that means is that you're breaking one logarithm up into multiple logarithms. So for part A, we have log base 4 of 7 times 5. So I would break this up into log base 4 of 7 plus log base 4 of 5. For part B, this is log of 10x. Remember, when there's no base, it's the common log or the log with base 10. So I would break this up into log of 10 plus log of x. So whatever base you have, you just keep that same base when you're expanding. So we have b, b, and b, all the same base here. Now for this one, log of 10 plus log of x, I can simplify log of 10 because remember this is log base 10 of 10. And so 10 to what power equals 10? Well, that's 1. So I can replace log of 10 with 1. Log of x, I would just keep that as it is. So my answer is 1 plus log of x. So next you should look at checkpoint problem number 1. Do these in your notes, check your answers, and then move on with the video. Our next property is the quotient rule. The quotient rule states that log base b of m divided by n, or m over n, equals log base b of m minus log base b of n. So we break it up into two separate logarithms and subtract them. So for example 2, we're using the quotient rule to expand each. So for part a, I would have log base 7 of 19 minus log base 7 of x. So whatever is in the quotient, um, the denominator of the fraction, I would put that with the minus sign in front of it. Whatever is in the numerator would have a plus sign in front of it, or no negative sign. So for part b, this one is a natural log, which remember means log base e. So it's going to be natural log of e to the third, minus natural log of 7. Now I can simplify natural log of e to the third. This is going to be 3. So ln means log base e, e to what power equals e to the third, that's going to be 3. So ln of e to the third simplifies to 3. I just leave ln of 7 as it is because I cannot simplify that one. So we have 3 minus ln of 7. So next you should look at checkpoint problems number two. Do these in your notes, check your answers, and then move on with the video. Next we're going to talk about the power rule. So the power rule says that if I have log base b of m to the p power, I can move that power to the front and multiply it by the logarithm. So this would be p times log base b of m. So for example 3, we're using the power rule to expand each. So for part A, the 4 would move to the front. So it would be 4 times log base 5 of 7. We're going to skip part B and do part C. For part C, the 5 would move to the front. So that would be 5 times log 4x. Now what I could do here is I could break up the 4x as well. If I wanted to do that, that would be log of 4 plus log of x. But the book doesn't show this, it just shows breaking it down by moving the 5 to the front. So 5 times log of 4x. So next you should look at checkpoint problem number 3, parts A and C. Do these in your notes, check your answers, and then move on with the video. 
So next we have a couple of summary tables. The first one shows rules for expanding logarithmic expressions, which are the rules that we just saw. We're just putting them all together here in one box. And if we go to the next page, we have properties for condensing logarithmic expressions. And these are the same properties, they're just written in the opposite direction. So when I'm condensing, what I'm doing is I'm taking something with multiple logarithms and writing it as a single log. So we're going to look at example 5. It says to write as a single logarithm. Log base 4 of 2 plus log base 4 of 32. So to put those together, I would have log base 4 of 2 times 32. This is using this first property here. So 2 is m and 32 is n. It's log um, base 4 of 2 times 32. And I know that 2 times 32 is 64. Now, log base 4 of 64 actually works out to be a whole number. Remember the question here is 4 to what power equals 64? And if you do some guessing and checking on your calculator, or you might know already, the answer is 3. So this entire thing can be simplified to just the number 3. For part B, this one I have log of 4x minus 3 minus log of x. This one has a subtraction sign, so that tells me that I'm going to use the quotient rule. So this is going to be log. 4x minus 3 will be on the top of the fraction, and x will be on the bottom. So 4x minus 3 over x. To be safe, I could put this in parentheses um, just to show that the log is applying to this whole thing. So next you should look at checkpoint problem number five. Do these in your notes, check your answers, and then move on with the video. We're going to do one more example here, and this is part B from example six. So again, we're condensing or writing as a single logarithm. Now when we're condensing, what we always want to do is look for powers first. So if there's any numbers in front of logs, or in this case it's ln, but any numbers in front will go on as exponents. That's what we want to do first. So this is ln of x plus 7 to the third minus ln of x. Once I have all of those powers back up as exponents, now I'm looking for things either with plus signs or minus signs in between that I can combine. In this case, there's a minus sign in between. So I would combine this to ln of x plus 7 to the third over x. And again, you could use a bracket around all of this if you want to. Um, sometimes my lab math doesn't require it. If you just type in x plus 7 to the third over x, then that might be okay. So next you should look at checkpoint problem number six. Do this in your notes, check your answer, and then move on to the homework. 